Graphene, a new form of carbon has long been of interest to scientists because of its similarities to the wonder material graphene. For over a decade, scientists have attempted to synthesize this form of carbon without much success. But now, a team from the University of Colorado Boulder has found a new way to synthesize the material that could open the door to faster transistors and smaller electronic devices. In this video, I tell you all about graphene, why this has been of interest to scientists for decades and how its structure has now been made possible in the lab. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Now before I talk about graphene, let us first understand more about carbon and what are known as carbon allotropes. Carbon is a very versatile compound with valency of 4, which means that it can form bonds with 4 other atoms. Now the way in which these atoms are arranged changes the physical properties of carbon. So for example, diamond and graphite are both carbon, but they look nothing like each other. Diamond is the hardest known natural substance on earth. This image shows how carbon atoms are arranged in a diamond. The atoms are arranged in a tetrahedral structure which lends diamond its hardness. On the other hand, graphite, which is used in pencils, is composed of carbon atoms arranged in hexagons which are then stacked in layers or sheets. Because these sheets, known as graphene, are bound by weak forces, they slide off easily, making them ideal for pencils. Now diamonds and graphite are known as allotropes of carbon. Carbon has several allotropes, including fullerenes, whose discovery won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1996. The existence of graphene was first proposed in 1960. Like graphene, graphene is also composed of layers of carbon atoms, but unlike graphene, where all the atoms are arranged in hexagons, graphene has additional carbon atoms connecting the hexagonal rings. However, despite decades of work and theorizing, only a few fragments have ever been created before. Now, in a study published in the journal Nature Synthesis, researchers describe how they have created graphene in the lab. There are different ways carbon allotropes can be constructed depending on how their bonds are utilized. Using traditional chemistry methods, scientists have successfully created various allotropes over the years. However, these methods don't allow for different types of carbon to be synthesized together in any sort of large capacity like what's required for graphene, which is why the allotropes so far only existed in theory. Researchers at CU Boulder, however, were studying reversible chemistry, which allows for bonds to self-correct and create novel ordered structures. According to the scientists, even though there was a considerable interest around graphene, the synthetic tools required to build it were limited, which is why the interest in synthesizing it went down. For this research, the team used a process called alkyne metathesis, an organic reaction that involves the redistribution or cutting and reforming of alkyne chemical bonds. Alkyne chemical bonds are basically those when two at carbon atoms attach with a triple bond and hydrogen atoms with a single bond. Along with alkyne metathesis, the researchers used thermodynamics and kinetic control to successfully create graphene. Unlike graphene, graphenes are optically transparent and mechanically flexible and yet strong and electronically conductive. Graphene samples have shown a melting point of 250 to 300 degrees Celsius, low reactivity to oxygen, heat and light, which means that they would be far more durable. The team says, much like graphene was dubbed as the wonder material, graphene could be the next generation wonder material. While the material has been successfully created, the team still wants to look into the particular details of it, including how to create the material on a large scale and how it can be manipulated. These efforts, in turn, should aid in figuring out how the material's electron conducting and optical properties can be used for industry applications like lithium-ion batteries. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box.